Here, we give a brief introduction to the Mobius inversion formula. This result properly belongs to a number theory course, so we're just going to give the basic approach, leaving the general theory to that course. To begin, definitions. So we'll say any function from the positive integers to the complex numbers is a number theoretic function. Then, a number theoretic function f is called multiplicative if whenever m and n are relatively prime, f on m n is equal to f of m times f of n. So this condition of being multiplicative says, if we want to understand f, it's enough to understand the values of f on powers of primes. And then we can just use the condition to put everything back together to get the values on any positive integer n. Now, for simple examples, okay, we could start with the function that takes value 1 for all n. Okay, straightforward to see that's multiplicative. Along those lines, I have the function that takes 1 when n is equal to 1 and 0 otherwise. We also have function that sends each n to itself. And along these lines, I have the function that sends each n to a power of n. So for some fixed exponent s, s can be any complex number. For something a little bit more number theoretic, we have 5n, the Euler totient function. So this is going to be the number of integers, say k, between 1 and n, such that k and n are relatively prime. So we saw that this was multiplicative last time. Now, if I have 1 is equal to 1, on powers of primes, if p is prime and I take an l greater than or equal to 1, phi of p of the l power is just equal to p of the l minus p of the l minus 1. So I'll take all integers between 1 and p of the l. So there's p of the l of those. And then we just throw away all multiples. And there's p to the l minus 1 of those. Finally can't have Mobius inversion without the Mobius function. So this is denoted by mu. Mu of n is equal to 1 when n is equal to 1. If n is a product of distinct primes. We take minus 1 to that number of primes and 0 otherwise. It's straightforward to see that this is multiplicative. If we think in terms of values on powers of primes, here we'll get minus 1 when the exponent is equal to 1, so we just have a prime, and 0 otherwise. Now, we have some examples of multiplicative functions. How do we make new ones from old ones? First, we have the usual product. So if f and g are multiplicative, so is f times g, okay, our usual multiplication of functions. We also have other operations at work. So proposition, f is multiplicative, then so is g of n defined by, gonna take f of d, where d ranges over all divisors of n, and then take the sum. Now, let's look at some examples, and then we'll give the proof. Start off, let's take f of n equal to 1, okay, where this is going to hold for all n. So we know that's multiplicative. We apply our operation. We get d of n. So I'm just going to take the sum of 1 over all divisors of n. That gives the number of divisors of n. So we call this the divisor function. By the proposition, this is multiplicative. But of course, you could just check straightforward. We take i of n equal to 1 when n is equal to 1, 0 otherwise. g of n is just going to be, okay, we take i applied to d. Now here, if we consider all divisors of any n, okay, 1's a divisor which will give 1, and we get 0 otherwise. So this is going to be equal to 1 for all n. We get back our function in 1. So multiplicative. We take f of n equal to n to the s, where s is a fixed complex number. We apply our operation. Okay, we'll call this function sigma sub s. This is equal to the sum of the divisors raised to the sth power. Okay, and again, you could show that this is multiplicative in a straightforward way, but we get it for free using the proposition. Let's give a proof of the proposition. We have f multiplicative. We define g of n as, can we take f of d, where d ranges over all divisors of n, and then take the sum. I want to show g is also multiplicative. 
So if m and n are relatively prime, we want to show that g of m n equals g of m times g of n. Take g of m n, okay, we're out the definition. d is a divisor of m n. Okay, m and n are relatively prime, so we can write d as d1 times d2, where d1 divides m, d2 divides n. We have that d1 and d2 are also relatively prime. Now, that lets us write this sum in this form. Because f is multiplicative, d1 and d2 are relatively prime, I could split this up. Then we know that this sum is just a product of sums. Okay, one over the divisors of m, the other over the divisors of n. That's exactly what we want. We have g of m times g of n. So g is multiplicative, and that's the proposition. Now, with one and two, we have a third way to construct multiplicative functions. So if f and g are multiplicative, the product's multiplicative, then we can apply our operation to the product. So this is also multiplicative. For Mobius inversion, I want to replace f of d with f of n over d. This we call Dirichlet convolution. It's defined on any two number theoretic functions, not necessarily multiplicative. Now, if f and g are multiplicative, then so is their Dirichlet convolution. There's much more to the theory of Dirichlet convolutions, but that's for a number theory course. Now, for here, okay, this definition doesn't seem very motivated. So let's say something about convolutions. So you may have seen convolutions in a differential equations course. So what's the idea behind convolution? Well, that's weighted averages. Now, the most basic place to see this is when we take products of power series. So let's suppose I have a power series in A, power series in B. Want to know, can we take the product? We get a power series with coefficient C. So what's the formula for C sub K in terms of the A's and B's? Well, okay, so C sub K is the coefficient of X to the K. So how do I multiply an X to the I and an X to the J to get an X to the K? Well, I plus J must be equal to K. The contribution from the coefficients, we get A sub I times B sub J. So the formula for C sub K is take A sub I times B sub J, then sum over all I and J such that I plus J is K. And that's precisely the definition of convolution. Now, to make this more useful, we can put things in terms of one variable. So I'll substitute out the j. Then what I have is, okay, we have a sum going from 0 to k and i, a sub i times b sub k minus i. Now, what we have in the Dirichlet convolution, okay, here we're using addition, and here we use instead multiplication. So it's still a convolution. Here's a statement of the Mobius inversion formula. We have two number theoretic functions, f and g, okay, not necessarily multiplicative. If I define g as the divisor sum operation on f, then we recover f as the Dirichlet convolution of the Mobius function in g, and then vice versa. Now, we'll save the proof of this to the very end, for now, we work with examples to get used to Dirichlet convolution. First example, let's take g of n equal to sigma sub s. So we're taking the sum of the divisors of n raised to the sth power. Mobius inversion says, can we take Dirichlet convolution of the Mobius function with sigma sub s? I should get back n to the sth power. Because all functions involved here are multiplicative, It'll be enough just to verify this on a power of a prime. So let's check that. So we'll take our Dirichlet convolution, evaluate it at p to the k with p a prime. Now we know it with the Mobius function. Mobius function is zero if and only if n has a square factor. So the only terms that contribute to our sum are going to be p to the k and p to the k minus one. Now we put p to the k in here, we get a one, so a one comes out. We put p of the k minus 1 in here, we get a p, so that becomes a minus 1. So we're looking at this difference here. If we write out okay, sum of our divisors to powers, okay, what do we have? Well, this is p to the k with p a 
prime, so it just has sum over the powers of p up through k. When we take the difference, all terms go away except for the last term, which is p to the k to the s power. That's our n to the s as promised. Our next examples come from cyclotomic polynomials. First, by counting nth roots of unity, we've seen that n is equal to okay, divisor sum operation applied to the Euler totient function. Using Mobius inversion, the Euler totient function is now the Dirichlet convolution of the Mobius function and g of n equal to n. To get a feel for this, okay, let's try n equals 20. Using the multiplicative property, 520 is equal to 54 times 55. 5. 54, want the number of integers between 1 and 4, relatively prime to 4. Okay, 1 and 3, so we get a 2. 55 5 is equal to 4. We multiply and we get 8. Using the formula, okay, we're going to list all divisors of 20. Then we'll take 20 divided by each divisor. And we apply mu. Now, 20 and 4 go to 0 because they have square factors. 10 is a product of two distinct primes, so we get a 1. 5 and 2 are primes, so we get minus 1 for each. We multiply by each divisor, and then we sum. Okay, so we get 22 minus 14 gives an 8, and that agrees with our answer using the multiplicative property. Now, we also want the formula for the nth cyclotomic polynomial over the rationals. Okay, so recall this is the minimal polynomial of e to the 2 pi i divided by n over the rationals. We've seen before, if I take x to the n minus 1, that factors completely as a product of cyclotomic polynomials. Then here, index ranges over all divisors of n. Now, the Mobius inversion formula does not apply to this directly. We have a product instead of a sum. What we'll do, okay, first, I'm going to pick x with absolute value less than 1. So now I'm just considering numbers on each side. Then, to turn this product into a sum, we apply logarithm. Now, that gives this equation here. Mobius inversion applies. Then we exponentiate to get rid of the logarithms. So that gives this formula that we had from before. Okay, the nth cyclotomic polynomial is going to be a product. Okay, the factors are x to the d minus 1 raised to the mu n divided by d. d is going to range over all divisors of n. Okay, we've seen examples of this in the previous part. Now, for the proof, we'll only show one direction. Go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Leave the other direction to you. For first phase, we assume that f is multiplicative. That way, okay, because all of our operations preserve the multiplicative property, it's enough just to verify our formula on n equal to a power of a prime. Now, what are we trying to show? We want to show if I take Dirichlet convolution, the Mobius function, with the divisor sum operation on f, we get back f itself. Okay, so here, we're putting this into here. Now, if we put in n equal to power of a prime, say p of the k, we note as before, because of the Mobius function, the only terms that contribute are d equal to p of the k and p of the k minus 1. Now, that's going to give, okay, we have two sums, Okay, we have a difference, and we note we're using the same divisors except for an extra p of the k. So everything cancels but f on p of the k, and that's what we wanted to show. Now, for the general case, we're doing induction on the number of distinct prime factors in the n. We've just shown the case where we have one prime factor. Now, for the induction, Okay, we're going to assume true for n with k prime factors. So I want to show the formula on n p of the k where n and p are relatively prime. So we substitute in to what we want to work with, okay, like this. And we note as before, only terms are going to contribute are going to be those that have a p of the k or a p of the k minus 1. So that lets us rewrite our formula as so. 
To finish, we stay organized. We have several sums and many divisors, so we want control. Our goal, we want to remove all powers of p from our equations so we can invoke the induction hypothesis. Now, I'll fix d a divisor of n, and we'll consider what's happening inside the bracket. Now, d and p are relatively prime because n and p are relatively prime. So if I consider divisors d prime of dp of the k, we'll have a part that divides d and a power of p. Using our approach from before, okay, in this difference for a fixed divisor of d, this is going to telescope, leaving us with f, okay, that divisor times p of the k. So we go from here to this sum. I have f d prime p of the k, where d prime ranges over the divisors of d. Now, to take out the p of the k, we're going to introduce a new function. So I'll define h of d prime to be f of d prime p of the k. That gives, okay, we have an equation entirely in terms of, okay, n. So that means we can invoke our induction hypothesis, and this expression is equal to h of n. Now, I substitute back in, we have f n p of the k, which is what we wanted to show. So that gives our proof of the Mobius inversion formula.